Creator of all, Maker of all, Father of all, Lord of all, God. It's another day's journey. You've given us another day. Thank you. Not only another day, but a chance to come back into your house. Mm -hmm. To thank you. And to give you praise. And to worship your name in the beauty of holiness. Thank you. Thank you for Bethany Baptist Church, church family, all guests. Thank you for our pastor that you planted here, God, that teaches us book, chapter, and verse Thank you. from your holy word, your infallible word, your holy Bible. Thank you this morning, God, for your son, Jesus, who was born of the Virgin Mary, crucified, dead and buried, got up one Sunday morning with all power in his hand, and ascended back up into heaven with the God, the Father Almighty. From then he shall judge the quick and the dead. God, we thank you, God, knowing that God with you as our Father and Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. We know that one day we will reign with you, but until then, God, we will praise you. Yeah. We will worship you. We will honor you. We will serve you. Let us redeem of the Lord say man this morning. Amen. Come on, say man this morning. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. And we'll have our praise and worship team.
always a blessing to be at Bethany. Amen. Amen. So good to see you all today. Let us stand quickly for the reading of the Word of God. Our customary passage of Psalm 100. I will recite as you repeat. Make a joyful noise. Make a joyful noise. Unto the Lord. Unto the Lord. All you land. All you land. Serve the Lord. Serve the Lord. With gladness. With gladness. Come before his presence. Come before his presence. With singing. With singing. Know ye. Know ye. That the Lord. That the Lord. He is God. He is God. And he is he. He is he. That has made us. That has made us. And not we. And not we. Ourselves. Ourselves. We are his people. We are his and the sheep of his pasture. Of his pasture. Enter, into his Enter into his gates with thanksgiving. With thanksgiving. And into his courts and with, praise. with praise. Be thankful unto him, Be thankful unto him. And, bless his name. and bless his name. For the Lord is good. The Lord is good. His, mercy. his mercy is everlasting. everlasting. His truth is true. Endure. 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 All generations. All generations. Oh, bless his name today.
Y'all come on in. I know, I know that time got me. I know that time got me. Man, it kind of, kind of got me too. So um, I landed. We landed on the plane last night around midnight. And by the time we got our luggage and made it to the house, it was one. After one o'clock this morning, but nonetheless, I'm thankful I had to go get my boy. Right, when it's up, son, he's waving his hand. He's sitting in the back, playing on the game. So, so you know, I'm, I'm overjoyed today to have him here today. Uh, it's been good to see y'all. It's been like a little while since I saw y'all last. What did you last Sunday? I want to thank Minister Mayweather for filling me in. I preached the past anniversary last Sunday. And then Wednesday night, I was preaching over in Queens. And on Thursday, I went to Texas and, and came back on yesterday. So so good to see you all this month. All right, right quick. Visitors, first time visitors, stand. Let us see. First time, any week out of the year, you can find a person or find a conference for women, for women's conferences. However, this one is unique because as I have observed it, I've never been to the conference, but as I've watched it, uh, online or what have you from time to time. Uh, it's, it's, it's a ministry that is, that is Christocentric. It is Christ-centered in totality. And that is what grabbed my attention. It's not about just the failed needs of women, women who've been in a bad relationship, with which, women who've been hurt or what have you. It's about the difference that Jesus can make, whatever the hurt might be. And that ministry grabbed my, got my attention. I reached out to her and I wanted to ask her to actually have her here a little sooner uh, so that we could be exposed to that particular ministry. So she's finally able to come here on today. Her name is uh, Erica Williams Woodley of the, what's his name actually? Crossing Crown Christian Church in Orange, New Jersey. So she's going to bless us with a word today. I want to push and promote her ministry. If you're interested in being a part of it, it'll be a blessing to you. Because as we, whatever we celebrate as a church, I pray that we always try to find, try to find Christ in all that we do. Yes. Amen. Amen, somebody. Amen. There are a lot of people to celebrate. There are a lot of noteworthy people in the world. But I pray that we'd always try to find always. does this person or did that person ever get to know Jesus yeah, as their personal Savior. Right. So no matter what you accomplish down here, yes. only what you do for Christ, they no last somebody, yes. will last. Only what you do for him will be counted in the end. That's right. And so that is what I pray will be our next as a church. So after we shall heard from the choir, the next voice you will be that of Minister Erica Williams Williams.
But um, I'm going to make sure that you do get something to take with you on today. Amen. I am going to make sure that you have something that God has given it to me. I believe that God is the type of God that doesn't just speak to one person. I believe that he is omnipresent and that he's omniscient. I believe that he is everywhere at the same at the time. time. And I do believe that whatever he has spoken unto me, for me in this season, he is also speaking to you. Amen. 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 So I'm going to ask that you would turn your Bibles to the book of Philippians in the chapter um, 3. Um, if you would please turn to Philippians chapter 3. And my supporting text will be coming right behind that chapter 4. And if it is custom for you to stand for the reading of God's word, I would ask that you would do so at this time. I will be reading from a Hebrew translation. If you have the word of God, please say word. Philippians chapter 3, verses 12. And I do not mean to say that I have already achieved these things, or that I have already reached perfection, but I press on to possess that perfection for which Christ Jesus first possessed me. No, dear brothers and sisters, I have not achieved it, but I focus on this one thing, forgetting the past, all right, all right, all looking right. forward to what lies ahead. I press on to reach the end of the race and to receive the heavenly prize for which God, through Christ Jesus, is calling. Mm -hmm. I would now like to turn your attention to Philippians chapter 4, and I will be reading and you're hearing verses 12 through 13. I know how to live on almost nothing. All right now. Uh -huh. Or with everything. Yeah. I've learned the secret of living in every situation. Mm -hmm. Whether it is with a full stomach mm -hmm. or empty. <coughs> with plenty or little. For I can do everything through Christ who gives me strength. Even so, you have done well to share with me in my present difficulty. Thus is the reading of God's word. And just for the moment in time that I have been allowed to share with you on today, if there's a thought that I would like to leave with you, there's several thoughts that come out of this. But I really want to leave this is that when quitting is not an option. All right. All right. When quitting is not an option. All right. When quitting is not an option. This is a, 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 in this world of competitors, I like sports. I am a sports lover, and particularly I, I do like I do like football. But football is not really where I hit it this morning when I'm talking about this sport, this competition, this race that Paul is talking to us in this pericope that he's speaking about. Um, Paul is talking about this Christian race yes. that we have to run. And so yeah. I'm gonna, for the sake of this message, I wanna talk about the competitive sport of a marathon runner and, uh -huh. and those that actually have to run with endurance and have to complete a race that sometimes gets a little bit tiring because we are in this Christian race and because there will be highs and lows and because there will be times that we feel great and times that we don't, yeah. we have to learn how to pace ourselves, amen? Right. Yes. So in the world of competitive sports, many very good and promising athletes will compete for a title and even dream of obtaining the prize. Yeah. However, relatively few will pay the price for the intense physical training and years of preparation that must take place prior to the competition. Yeah. Even those who try may fall out of the race somewhere right. along the way. Yeah. Uh -huh. However, many runners mistakenly believe a dream of completing a race such as a marathon is an unattainable goal. The marathon distance of 26.2 total miles may seem unsurmountable, but the truth is many runners attempt and complete marathons each year. These marathon finishers are not only seasoned athletes, but they are those who have been training all of their lives for these events. Many first-time marathon finishers are actually amateur athletes who may not have any special training or running experience prior to deciding to train and compete for a marathon. But when we are in this Christian race, we have to realize that 
quitting is not an option. <laughs> so Paul, if we was to look at Paul right now, and I would just like to say he's a little bipolar in the sense that in one point of his life, he was basically against the Christians. Am I right? And then the other point of his life, he was basically radical for Christ. So we're going to look at Paul a little bit on this morning. Paul is writing a letter of joy to the Philippians. This is a personal expression of his love and affection, for they had brought him great joy in this season of his life. Paul, who was in prison at the time, wanted to thank them for their gifts and also encourage them in their faith. Yeah. This letter was also meant to strengthen the believers by showing them that true joy comes from Christ and Christ alone. He also wanted to encourage them in their faith during the trials that they were going to face. This church that Paul was talking to was very, very fond of. He was very fond of them. And although Paul was writing from prison, there was still a presence of joy that remained with him in this state that he was in. Yeah. The secret to his joy was grounded in his relationship with Christ. Yeah, uh, yeah, and yeah. We all need to get a relationship get with a Christ. Christ. Amen. Yeah. I heard your pastor say that you know how can we pray if we don't have a relationship with the person that we're talking to? Who is it that we can summon to our call yeah. if he does not know our voice and we don't know who to call on? Yeah. Yeah. So the Philippians is also noted to be a book highlighting the theme of joy. Yeah. The concept joy is mentioned a total of 16 times yeah, throughout yeah. the book. Yeah, yeah. In essential, Paul was liberating the church of Philippi and preparing them as well for what was to come. Yeah. Paul desired to know Christ, and most importantly, he had learned to know Christ in the most difficult times of his life. Uh. Have you ever had to get to know Christ in the most yeah. difficult times of your life? Uh, yeah. Paul models for us a life dedicated to Christ. When one has to face excruciating poverty, abundant wealth, and everything in between, peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, or maybe even Raymond noodles or Roman noodles, whatever you like to call the type of noodles, from abundant wealth to lobster free filet mignon and everything in between, whatever the circumstances was, Paul had learned how to become content. Paul had a press. Paul had a goal. And he was focusing all of his energy on knowing Christ and obeying him. Yeah, yeah. He wanted to know Christ in the power of his resurrection yeah, yeah. and in the fellowship of his suffering. Yeah. He writes this during his imprisonment while he was in Rome. He wrote this letter, a joyful letter from a place of darkness, probably one yeah, of the yeah, darkest ahead, times of yeah, his ahead. life. Yeah. And yet he still learned that whatever the circumstances were, yeah, yeah. he had yeah. learned how to become content. Yeah. And even in his unnatural state of joy, considering yeah. his present state of gloom, uh. Paul had focused all of his energy in knowing Christ and guess what? Obeying him. Yeah. All right. Right. I would like to say that he was preparing to run a race yeah, yeah. and that he was going to endure it to the end yeah. because quitting was not an option. Yeah. There are many times in life that we may set dates, we may set goals, we may have dreams, we may have aspirations, but as detailed as they might be, they don't always work out that way. Sometimes in life we can be on our very merry way and then something called life knocks at our door. Yeah. When we get this unexpected visit in life, how do we respond to this unsurmountable, uncurable, and most unbelievable things that stand right in our path? You see, as Christians, life teaches us how to walk a certain way. And there are certain things that we will say that will give us experience. Now, I'm doing some teaching for the um, Department of Health of Education. And um, it's, it's a way that we are doing what's called um, health reform. And what we want to do is be able to keep people out of the hospital so that they do not go back into the hospital. Okay. But one of the things that they are, they talk about, one of the topics I talk about is depression. And they brought up some statistics about why people are killing themselves. And then they brought up the statistics of who is killing themselves. And one thing that they brought up that was very important, I learned as I was sharing this material, was that the highest rate of suicide was ages 18 to 24. Now, what does age 18 to 24 have to do with somebody wanting to say it's over and it's quitting time? Well, the fact that usually you're in your parents' home until you're about 18 years of age, you don't know what life is because everything has been provided for you. And so what I learned and I understood from the statistic was that this, they had not experienced life. But Christian living teaches you along the way that 
from each situation that you go to, you've learned God in one way until you can learn him in another way. And so what has happened with these 18 to 24 years old, they don't know what it is. They don't, know. They don't have life experience. So for them, it's about killing themselves. It's about jumping on the train tracks. It's about jumping off the buildings. It's about overdosing because they don't see no other way out. And so like in today's text, we're talking about Paul. Paul, bipolar Paul, the one who was one out to get the Christians, but now for the Christians, has now decided that he has joy even in his present state. In his present state, he has joy, unspeakable joy, in his bound state. So sometimes, like I say, we can be on our merry way and this thing called life will not earn our joy. Amen? So Paul, in his letter, in this thank you letter, is liberating. He's basically wanting to warn them that problems would arise, but this is going to be a new course. This yeah. is going to be something that they hadn't seen. And sometimes we are faced with new challenges in life. But if we can just think back to where Christ has brought us from, then we can continue to press on in our ways. Amen? Right. So it is in this thank you letter that he has prepared the Philippines to also for the difficulties that would be coming. You see, in many ways, the church of Philippi was a model of today's congregation. It was made up of many different types of people who were learning to work together. I believe that we are all working together as one in the body of Christ. But just as Paul liberated and encouraged the church of the Philippians, it is my prayer that through me, God can encourage someone here today who wants to quit, who wants to give in, who is tired, who has said, I can't wait until today is over when I am done. I am, again, I said, just talking to myself. But sometimes life has a way of allowing you to throw up your hands and say, I just want to quit. Yeah. At times, we could care less if we have a replacement or we don't want to do this anymore, so we just want to quit. We leave church, we stop speaking, we just yeah. flat give up and give in. Oh. But I would like to suggest how we can pace ourselves for this Christian race. Yeah. Our text on today suggests that we press on towards the goal. That's Our right. goal should be to focus on getting to know Christ, yeah. to be like Christ, yeah. and to be all that he has desired yeah. us to be. Yeah. Hebrews yeah. chapter 12 and 1 and 3 says that therefore since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off every weight that hinders us and sin that so easily entangles us and let us run with perseverance the race oh, yeah. walked out for yeah. us, yeah. fixing our eyes on Jesus, yeah. the pioneer and the perfecter of faith yeah. for the joy set before him he endured the course. We're in Lent saints, yeah. scoring in shame and sat down at the right hand of the throne yeah. of God, yeah. consider him who endured such opposition from sinners so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. Yeah. God will help us also to finish our goal by pushing us to our limits. And even though we might not feel strong enough to push on to victory, we will be able to accomplish what we do when we follow Christ and we grow up in his strength. Yeah. It was also Christ who was on the course said, it is finished. He never said, I am finished. Go ahead. Yeah. I'm out of Amen. To reach this goal that Christ has set before us, it is going to take a following few ingredients. Yeah. So I now you can take your paper out and your bulletins and we're going to write down our points that we're going to speak about. Uh -huh. Amen? Yeah. So the four points that we're going to focus on is going to be one, endurance. Yeah. The second one is going to be desire. Yeah. The next is going to be preparation. We're going to have discipline and obedience. Uh -huh. That's five. Endurance. Desire, yes. preparation, mm. yes. discipline, and obedience. My, my, my. Right. Endurance. Yes. In any contest, marathon or race, the important factor is not how many begin the competition, but who finishes the race. Yes. Right. And who completes the course? Who wins the prize? <laughs> Later in life, Paul declared, I have fought a good fight. good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Yes. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness. From these scriptures we can see various aspects must be considered regarding the race set before us. The need for endurance the focus of our vision, keeping the rules, self-discipline, the desire, and the determination to win. If we lack any in these areas, we will become vulnerable to defeat and failure. Yeah. Yeah. Endurance, by the very sense of the term, implies the necessity of opposition. Yeah. Jesus gave several promises to him that overcometh, but there must be obstacles that come before us. Okay. If we are to lay up the whole the prize, just like those unexpected knocks the doors of life, sickness, 
troubled marriage, unexpected death of a loved one, loss of employment. Life just happens when we least expect it to. It shows up, and it shows up unannounced. But Paul repeatedly exhorts believers to continue in the faith, for we must through much tribulation enter into the kingdom of God. Acts 14, 21, and 22. If we hold to the beginning of our confidence steadfast to the end, then we will obtain the reward. And again, the choice is ours if we are unconditionally connected to Christ and yeah. we endure until the end. Uh -huh. The need for endurance in the Christian life is crucial. Yeah. Whether we are aware or not, a continual warfare is taking place in the heavens. Yes. Walking with God is an uphill climb. Yeah. At all times, we all feel we can, in the words of Paul, is hold on. But when it is easy yeah. to take a break, yeah. we must press on towards the mark. Yeah. When no strength lies within us to complete the course, we must draw upon an inner strength to sustain us. When we would have the tendency to look back and yeah. to be content with how far we have come yeah. or discouraged with the length of the way, let us look to Jesus. Uh -huh. He is able to keep us from falling. Exactly. Yes. And when we do fall, we must learn to get up and begin anew. Yeah. Yeah. A righteous man falls seven times and arises. <laughs> Our desire. Mm -hmm. And even with all the preparation of a race, now, or complete the course if they do not show up for the race. Uh, I told you I like sports, right? Yeah, yeah. Vince Lombardi quotes, a quitter never wins, and a winner never quits. There is a need to go hard for the things of the Lord. How far will we go in God is determined by the desire of our hearts. Yes. Psalms 37 and 4. According to the word of Paul, God is at work in us, both to will and to do his good pleasure. Yeah, yeah. Preparation. Uh -huh. Many weeks, even years, go into training a successful athlete. The actual competition or test of endurance, however, is often a matter of only a few minutes. Uh -huh. So we spend all this time. You know, you passed to say something this morning, Pastor Chad, or you said, um, what would it be to, to climb this ladder of success to only find out that you made it on the wrong building? <laughs> Let that sit for a minute. <laughs> to do all of this. All of it. To do all of this, to come to church Sunday yeah, in and out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Tradition, to have church anniversary, to have mm -hmm. Women's Day, to have yeah. annual days, yeah. to have all of this and miss them all. We yeah. don't want to do that. No. <laughs> we do not want to do that. No. But the preparation after many weeks and even years going to training of a successful athlete, the actual competition or test is only a matter of few minutes, seconds. Jesus Christ was hidden away in the carpenter's shop until the age of 30, and even when he began his public ministry, it only lasted for three years. But those years were not wasted time. My, my, my. God was making him into the man he knew he needed him to be fit to the task so he would not enter unprepared. God is at work even in us right now to prepare us for the days that lie ahead. We must not take lightly this time of preparation. God is patient working for eternity and his timetable is not like that of a man. With him a thousand years is as one day. Let us consider to run a race and endure it to the end because quitting is not an option. All right. Discipline. We must be disciplined. An important part of God's training program is to become strong in the things of him. Before we can compete, we must become established, firm, rooted, grounded, and settled in faith. Uh -huh. yeah. This period of preparation is necessary to strengthen our spiritual muscles. Yeah. In order to enter into a race or even qualify as a contestant, one must learn to cast aside anything that's going to be detrimental to the program of this training. Right. As Hebrews 12 and 1 says, we must lay aside every weight. And I every mean way. every weight. Whatever the weight is, we yeah. have to lay it aside. Yeah. Because we have to continue this race and go on. Yeah. And finally, our obedience. Right. And enduring until the end. To qualify for the final, one must abide by the rules of the competition. That's right. Right. In God's kingdom, as well, certain laws and guidelines must be not violated. Jesus spoke of those who offered to work for him but did not complete the instructions. <laughs> Afterward, they went their own ways. Many focused on the initial speed of their progress, oh, right. but overlooked 
one far greater factor of success, and that was consistency. We've got to be consistent. We've got to be consistent. We can't miss a Sunday. We can't skip a year and skip a day and think that we're going to have progress or we're going to have growth. You have to get it all. You have to get it consistent. Amen? So we may start out in the front line leading, but if our progress is not consistent, if we become entangled with the affairs of this life, we will fall back as we will weary in the stresses of the race, but we want to run the race and endure it to the end. As I prepare to bring all of my thoughts to a close and our lives in eternity, we are affected now by many choices that we make daily. I would like to suggest that if we are indeed going to run this race and reach our goal through Christ, yeah. The key points that Paul is highlighting here were very real even for today. Yeah. You see, Paul hadn't said he had achieved his goal. Oh, I mean, yeah. he was still in prison, but he used the words like, I pressed. Yeah, I, yeah. Mean, I strained to get in those yeah. things that was behind me. I mean, he was in prison, but he still was pressing. I mean, do you know what prison is? Do you know what it is to be in prison, to have to be told when to eat and how to eat and what you eat? I mean, he was in prison, but he was still pressing. And Paul he was going to die soon, so still he didn't quite know how he was going to die or whether it was going to be by execution or an after death. He still found a way to press towards his goal. But how about forgetting those things? Paul, just like us today, has some things in our past that we're not so proud of. But like Paul, we have to forget those things that are behind us and we have to strain for our goals that before us. This can be hard and it may be the reason why Paul chose these words because people don't ever want you to leave your past behind you. You see, your sin is ever before you, but the last time I checked my Bible, sin is still sin. And today, I am sure that life challenges and roadblocks has knocked on your door just like it has as mine. But thanks to God, be encouraged because the course you are running before many will never step into a church. Maybe those people that you don't even have to say, I go to church, will look at your life and emulate and say, that what is that I must do to be saved. Yeah. You know, yeah. Yeah. Amen. There's a lot of people that will never come to you. But they will come to see your office, they will come into your home, they will come to your neighborhood. And you've got to be an example of Christ. Yeah. And with that being said, we want to be able to hear, well done, our good and faithful servant. Yeah. Amen. We want to continue to know that it is not always easy, but I believe that if we hold on to the fact yeah. of Philippians 4 and 16, I can do all things oh, in Christ who yeah. me. Final exhortation tells them to Philippians, rejoice in the Lord always. And I say again, rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious for anything, but in every situation, in prayer, and thanks, and presence, and make your presence request known unto God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your heart and your mind. Amen. In Christ Jesus. Finally, my brothers and my sisters, whatever is so true, whatever is so noble, whatever is so right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is terrible, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think on these things. Whatever you have learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, put it into practice and the God of peace will be with you. Don't know how we made it, but we did. Don't know how we made it, but we did. Amen. I want to close on this final story. Again, I love sports. So you'll learn this about me. But there was an Olympic race that was taking place, and there was a, um, a runner by the name of Mantio Mitchell. And you know, when again, we say as you're preparing for a marathon, you're preparing for an Olympic race, um, the challenge was for him going the extra mile because he said that quitting is not an option. Quitting yeah. is not an option. Okay. Yeah. So at the 2012 United States Olympic Trials, Mantio Mitchell qualified for the Olympic team by finishing in the fifth in the 400 meters with a time of 44.96, which qualified him to run into the four times 400 meter relay as a member for the U.S. team. But something happened while he was running. He gained an injury as he was running. And he decided to continue to run, even with his injury. So, at the 2012 Summer Olympics held in London, Mitchell ran the first leg of the heat for the 4 times 400 meter relay and revealed afterwards that he had broke his left tibia mm. at the 200 mark, halfway, halfway when he broke it. But despite this, Mantio finished his lap and clocked out at a time of 46.1, and the American team was able to qualify for the final. Mitchell later earned a silver medal after the American team placed second in the final, 
And after the race was completed, a sports commentary interviewed him and said, you know, you injured yourself out there pretty bad. My, my. Why, why did you continue? Why did you continue? And he said, well, I felt like my leg was just going to snap. Mm -hmm. I just felt like I wanted to lie down and die, using his quote in quote words. And he said, I really felt like somebody just snapped my leg in half. He said, but I had to finish because my team sent me to finish, not to win. He decided that he was going to finish and he wasn't trying to win. They still won anyway. Yeah, yeah. And what am I saying, Saints? What am yeah, I saying yeah. today as I close and I take my seat? That it doesn't matter what it is that we come across. Yeah. There's always going to be something new at our door. It's going to be a turn in the road. There's going to be a distraction. There's going to be something brand new. It's going to be a new diagnosis. It's going to be another letter. But it's going to be able to be attainable because you're going to have this Christian grace and walk that you have yeah, yeah, yeah. So our goal is going to be to be consistent. Yeah. We want to be able to be enduring. Yeah. We want to be able to desire to complete it. We want to be prepared. Yeah. We want to be disciplined and we want to be obedient That's until right. the end of the call. Yeah. Amen? Amen. Amen? God bless you. Amen. God bless you.